What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about Hackintoshes. What is this, the George Bush thing? You might be interested in one because maybe you have commitment issues and don't want to spend the money on a real Mac. Maybe you think by making one of these somehow you're sticking it to Steve Jobs Ghost. Maybe you think that making one of these makes more sense for the price to performance ratio. But we all know you're a cheapskate. Like me. And you don't want to buy the real deal. If you aren't sure where to start and are worried about messing up, I got you covered with these boring Dell business laptops. When they were new, some sucker bought them in bulk like they were shopping at Costco and paid close to two grand each. Now you can take advantage of that sweet, sweet depreciation and get them for as cheap as a hundred bucks. These machines all have dedicated install guides online, so when you inevitably run into issues, I guarantee there's going to be someone out there that had the same question and already had it answered for you. No one's going to be fooled by the looks of these laptops, so don't go pulling it out at the local Starbucks expecting to fit in. These are business computers, and they've got the looks to match, which means they look like the most generic computer out there. If there was a movie and they needed a computer prop, they would get one of these. They do have it where it counts though under the hood, and a couple of these are definitely worth looking into. One thing to note about the laptops I'm going to be talking about is they all will most likely come with a non-compatible Wi-Fi card. So you're going to need to look into a replacement and these can run anywhere between $20 to $80. So you're going to need to factor that into your price. You can also use a Wi-Fi USB dongle if you're not worried about it sticking out all the time. So that's an option too. All right, so let's get into the comparison. And the first machine we'll be talking about is the Dell E7440. This is actually the first Hackintosh I ever made. And anyone I've made since then can be traced back to this one. It was basically like an alien. That was dumb. The 7440 was first introduced in 2013 and came with fourth gen Intel core processors, similar to the 13 inch MacBook Pro. This one is a dual core i5-4300U, but you can go all the way up to an i7-4600U, but honestly, the performance gains are gonna be minimal. There are a few different screen options, including a 1366 by 768 TN panel. This one looks terrible and has really bad viewing angles. Mine has the 1080p IPS panel with a matte finish. This one's pretty common and it looks good. The best you can get is a 1080p touchscreen. The glass panel looks noticeably sharper and the colors pop so much better. The touch panel will definitely cost you a bit more over the other options, but in my opinion, it's worth it. The keyboard and trackpad are the weakest of the bunch, and when compared to the others, it's enough reason to hold out for one of the newer models in my opinion. This uses DDR3 memory and caps out at 16 gigs. It has a SATA slot for the drive, and something unique to this model is that it can take a second M SATA SSD in the WAN slot to be used as extra storage or even a boot drive. All of these laptops will have very simple serviceability. Like I said, these are business laptops and they need to be easy to fix to minimize downtime. So how does the 7440 work as a Hackintosh? Well, the install is as easy as it gets. Just follow the guide online and you should be good to go. Once it's up, it feels pretty snappy and for day-to-day -day use such as web browsing, word processing, and consuming online content, it'll handle those with no sweat. When it comes to some heavy lifting, you can see the processor is starting to show its weakness. I ran all of these through three benchmarks to give them some objective numbers to look at. First was Geekbench 5. It scored a 691 single core and 1372 multi-core. This score puts it right in line with a 13-inch MacBook Pro from the 2013-2014 era with an i5. Next was Cinebench which scored a 608. Finally, since I suspect people will be wanting to use Final Cut Pro if they're going to be using Mac OS, I mean it is the reason I started using it. I ran the Bruce X Final Cut Pro benchmark. This renders a 5K file and then you use a timer to see how long it takes to render the file. This scored a minute and 57 and was actually better than I expected, but I haven't actually tried to edit any videos with it, so I'm not sure how it'll handle in a real workload. The price on the 7440 can vary widely depending on the specs, but can be had for as cheap as $100. And it can go up to about 200 for a fully decked out model with the touchscreen. This is the oldest of the bunch and it shows. The looks definitely leave a bit to be desired. It's not a bad choice for diving into the Hackintosh world, but I don't think you'll be doing much real work on it. And if all you're gonna do is browse the web, then what's the point of all the trouble converting this to Mac OS? The dated looks, poor keyboard and trackpad keep this from being a solid recommendation. The next model we have is an E7450, which was introduced in 2015 and sports fifth gen Intel processors, which like before is in line with the equivalent MacBook. Like the 7440, these are available in a bunch of different configs, including the same screen options. Because of that, everything I said about the 7440 screen applies to the 50. Stay away from the 768TN panel and shoot for the glossy touchscreen if you can find one. The keyboard makes a huge leap forward and feels great to type on, and the trackpad is improved as well. These alone are enough for me to always recommend the 50 over the 40. 
It's largely the same chassis as the 7440, so it shares the same internal layout. Has the same 16 gigabyte cap and SATA slot for the drives. But for this model, Dell got rid of the ability to run drives from the WAN slot, so you don't get that dual drive option like the 7440 had. Let's take a look at the benchmarks to see how it stacks up. In Geekbench, it scored an 800 single core and 1709 multi core. This is actually pretty high for this machine, and I ran it a couple times just to make sure, and I got the same result every time. Cinebench scored a 669, which seems more in line with scaling from the 40 to the 50. The Final Cut Pro benchmark scored a 2 minute and 55 second. This result surprised me because it was significantly slower than the 7440 with its i5 processor. I ran the test twice on both machines and got the same result. It might be due to an outdated kex on the 7450 or even throttling issues, but the other tests seemed to be in line with what was expected. In normal use, this felt very similar to the 7440, handling normal day-to-day -day tasks with ease. The 7450 is very well supported by the Hackintosh community, and I had the least issues installing macOS on this one. Prices range anywhere from $150 to $250 on eBay, and if you keep an eye out, you can get a good deal with some decent specs. Just make sure you aren't getting that 768 screen. Next up, we have the E7440 from 2016. For some reason, Dell skipped the 7460 model, so this is the next one in line. This laptop is a big jump forward. The chassis changed, it's sporting 6th gen Intel hardware, and it makes the jump to DDR4 memory. And it also supports M.2 NVMe SSDs. Keeping with the theme, you'll find many configurations on this laptop with the same screen options as before, including that 768TN panel. Another big change to this model is the switch to an internal battery. No more swapping a battery out in two seconds here. The keyboard on this one feels even better than the 7450, while the trackpad feels pretty much the same. I should note that none of these laptops today can even hold a candle to a real MacBook trackpad, so I would suggest using an external mouse or my favorite option, the Magic Trackpad. Like I mentioned, this now uses DDR4 memory and caps out at 32 gigabytes, so that's double the previous models, which would help if you're gonna do some heavy lifting here. Speaking of, let's see how it did in the benchmarks. Geekbench scored a 702 single core and a 1768 multi-core. This is actually lower than the 7450 we just tested before. And once again, I ran the test multiple times and came up with the same score, so I'm not sure what the deal is here. Cinebench scored a 782, which is more in line with what you'd expect scaling the processors through the generations. With the Final Cut Pro benchmark, it scored a minute and 26 seconds, which is way better than I would have expected, and I think you could actually get some real editing done with this. The feel of the 7470 is a lot more modern than the 50. The updated wrist rest and keyboard make it way better to use day to day, and I think you could actually use this to get some light to moderate work done, including video and photo editing. Price-wise, I think the 7470 is right in that sweet spot of not costing too much, but you're still getting a pretty capable machine. I've seen prices anywhere from $200 up to $350, with some eBay listings ending in the sub-$200 range. If you're patient, you can definitely score a deal with this one. The final model we're looking at is the Dell 7490. This model is almost identical to the 7480 that we skipped, with one really large difference. It has 8th gen Intel under the hood, and that means we finally get quad-core. Up until now, every machine we've tested has been a dual core due to the U series of processors they have. The chassis has changed from the 70 and is a touch smaller now. It's most noticeable when opened up next to the other models. Something else that changed from the 70 is the addition of a Type-C slash Thunderbolt port on the side. The keyboard feels great, and this has the best trackpad, with one big exception. The buttons don't work at all. You can only use the trackpad by tapping on it. Once you're used to it, it's not too bad, but it's something to keep in mind. I still stand by my suggestion to use an external device. The screen looks great, but it's not as sharp or bright as the 7470. But without a side-by-side -side comparison, you would never think it was lacking. When it came to the Wi-Fi card on this one, I did something a little interesting. First, I bought a quote, compatible card, which caused me all sorts of issues, which many other people said was common with this card. I didn't want to pay the 50 to 80 bucks for the recommended card and wait for two hours from China, so I got an idea. In the Hackintosh desktop world, it's common to get an actual Apple Wi-Fi card and use an adapter. Then macOS just picks it up natively and everything just works. Get it? No. I wondered if it'd be possible to fit the adapter and the Apple card into the 7490. So I ordered an adapter from Amazon for like 12 bucks and a MacBook Air Wi-Fi card for eight bucks on eBay. Yeah, it's a little snug and there is a little lump on the bottom of the case, but it works 100% and I haven't had any issues since installing it. If you can make this card work, I would definitely recommend it over the other options to save the headache. 
So let's see what that quad core power can do for us in the benchmarks. When it came to Geekbench, the scores were all over the place and not exactly what I expected. The only thing I can think between the machines was that the 40 and 50 are running High Sierra and the 70 and 90 are on Mojave. I'm not sure if the OS is to blame for these numbers, but it is something to think about. Cinebench scored 1433 and the scores all seem to scale with what you expect between these computers. The Final Cut Pro benchmark got a minute and 34 seconds. This benchmark was the one that really threw me off the most. I thought the score on the 7470 was surprisingly good, but then the 7450 tanked with almost three minutes. The 7470 then kills it with a sub minute and a half, but then the 90 comes in behind with two generations better hardware. This machine is the snappiest of the bunch, which I guess is pretty obvious, but this thing feels great to use. It never slows down and everything works as expected, minus the trackpad buttons like I mentioned. Being from 2018, this is gonna be a bit more expensive, but I think if you're gonna do anything more serious, it's worth the extra cost. These can be had for as cheap as $300, but a decked out model will be closer to $600. You can still find these new in box as well, so keep an eye out for that. If you compare the benchmark scores, you're getting scores right up there with a 2018 MacBook Pro, and you're saving a significant amount of money, and you can upgrade the storage and RAM. So there you go, four different options for diving into the Hackintosh world. I definitely recommend the 7490 as my top choice. Sure, it is the most expensive, but compare it to an equivalent MacBook, and it's gonna be hundreds less. The 7470 takes the place for value to performance, but you can't go wrong with the 50 either if you wanted to save a bit more. I would skip the 7440, it's just getting too old and the keyboard and trackpad really hold it back. I mentioned it before, but these laptops are really well supported by their community and you'd be hard pressed to have an issue that hasn't already been covered and solved. I hope you enjoyed the comparison of these laptops. What's your favorite laptop to turn into a Hackintosh? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed what you saw and consider subscribing. Let me know if you'd like to see a Hackintosh walkthrough of any of these. I'd be happy to do it if you think it would help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.